So Hans, the state of the world today in seven snowballs. Go ahead. Well, you see, we are seven billion people in the world. Imagine that this is one billion, and this is the poorest billion. They are living here on extreme poverty. If they get poorer, they would die. Huh? The next billion here has a little more income, and then I put them here with higher and higher income, average income, of course, over the years. And you can see we are totally seven billion. Right. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Yeah. Now take us through what these different income levels are. But the most difficult is to understand how poor these people are down here. They can't even afford to buy a bicycle. I'll place the bicycle here. Huh? And when you are up here, then you can think about buying a car. So you can see one, two, three, four billion people, half the world population, live between the bicycle and the car. Right, so if those of us who tend to think that the world is binary and there's a rich world and a poor world, that's obviously nonsense because actually most people now are somewhere between the bike and the yeah, car, yeah. right? Yeah, and, and you know, if they can't afford the car, they'll go for a motorbike. <laughs> right. <laughs> and if you go up here to the richest, that's where you can afford, you know, to fly okay. on holiday. So maybe once a year you're going overseas on a plane. Let's put some names on these countries. So where's Brazil? That's a big country, emerging economy. Where would you put Brazilian the, average? The poorest people in Brazil, some few are here. The richest are there. The bulk in Brazil is here. OK, but look, the really important thing is how this has been changing over time. Yes. Because the balls have been moving up, up the wall, haven't they? Oh, you have. You know, when I was in school, you know, this once didn't exist. It was the poor people in the developing world and the rich people over there. Very little or almost nothing in the middle. This is the big change during my lifetime. But now, you know, we have all these people in the middle. So the population growth have not added people in extreme poverty. But the fact we haven't been able to lift this one up to the bicycle level, that's from where Ebola emerged. Right. This is where Boko Haram hides. Mm. Inequality is a big issue, and we hear a lot more about global inequality. Mm. And within, within lots of countries, you've seen the rich get richer and the poor not, and you've seen more inequality. Just give us one final view of the actual global inequality. If there were no boundaries, no countries, and we didn't measure inequality in the US or inequality in the UK, what has been happening to inequality in the world? The inequality in the world is decreasing. In the countries, it's increasing. The very fact, as you said, that there is a, there is a billion moving up here, that you asked me, where is Brazil? And I said, Brazil is there and Brazil is there. You know, where is Britain? Is Britain here? No, Britain is all the way down here. You know, while countries get bigger inequalities, the one in the world decrease. It's a little difficult to understand, but it means there are no rich countries, rich people in all countries. More people can afford the car and this. This is my grandpa. He could afford a bicycle. My parents could afford a motorbike <laughs> when I was 12, you know. When they were old, they could afford a car and me and my wife has been flying. So this is my family. And we have seen how we have improved. The whole world would like to improve like this. And the conflict today with inequality is that it's within countries. And that's what hurts people, really. It's just they lack the money, and it's also socially very stigmatizing not to have the resources. So the world is doing better than the countries. Hans, thank you very much.